Season three, chat. Season three. Let's do this. We've taken a look at the league. We've taken a look at our team. It's time to get down to business and hopefully see this team again pretty much, you know, a, a shot at being all right. But I mean, you know, pretty much you know, we're going to try to compete with the likes of Toronto and some other clubs that aren't going to be so good. We've picked fourth. Uh, well, technically, I mean, we had the fourth best lottery odds two years in a row. I don't know where we're going to be at the end of this season, but it's time to find out. I can't imagine, at the very least, we will be in a playoff scenario. And again, with the way that this game sims, you never know. You and Snipe should collaborate if possible to do the ultimate roster best of both worlds. Who knows what the future will bring, man. I still, uh, you know, I, I still have the desire to roster at it. It's just, like I said, the, the quality or lack thereof that EA puts out. This, this was the first year, man, where I'm just like, I, I can't. I just, it takes way, way too much time to try and fix the uh, less than stellar nature that they pump out. So, like I said, a, a flashback roster of my own would be great. Um, one, I don't want to compete with Snipe. <laughs> and two, on a collaboration, I wouldn't want to drag down the quality of work he does because he has this, I mean, as close to perfectly figured out as possible. I feel like I'd just get in the way, <laughs> you know, as I learn how I would want to try and craft things, but I digress. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers suck. That's not good. Ray Whitney's killing it though. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Sim another month here. Anytime we play the Oilers, which is coming up on twice in two weeks, we need to lose those games. I don't think we will, but we need to. Weaker than normal class. We did lose to the Oilers previously. That's good. And we'll play them again on the first. Woo! We are shit. Look at that. 5, 21, 1, and 2. Oh, we are finally big trash garbage. Low Elite has scored its first goal. Who got it? Who's the record maker? Who's the history maker? Oh, my God. We got crushed. It was Frank that scored. What a guy. We got absolutely crushed this past month. Again, uh, ties are a factor. It goes wins, losses, ties, and overtime losses. No points for overtime losses. You do get a point for a tie, though. Uh, so in case you're wondering how we ended up on 11, that is the way. We are tragic so far, which is perfect. That is the goal. However, the Washington Capitals are also tragic. Even Edmonton is pretty far ahead of us on points percentage. So despite how bad we are, we do still have competition. For those top lottery odds in a year where the prize at the end is Jerome McGinla. Obviously having a 64 overall top center, you know, is certainly helping our cause, isn't it? It is. So <laughs> let's sim another month as we'll be heading into the glorious year of 1995. I don't remember it well because I was one. Paul Sear got hurt. That's okay. Whoa, my God, dude, we've won so many games this month already. What? Stop winning! We go from losing, like, all of our games in November to winning the majority of our games in December. Experience inconsistent Sharks hockey. We are now ahead of the Edmonton Oilers on points. Son of a bitch. That's not good. That is not good. Got the seven points on the season for John Madden. What a guy. Okay. Um, I want to double check. Now that we're at the midway point of the season, whether or not someone like Hobby Bullen's become backup quality, and he has. Winnipeg, what's up, by the way? So we're going to bump up Hobby Bullen and send down Blaine Locker. It'll be uh, Carey and Hobby Bullen battling it out for the starting role. Defensively, nobody to call up. 
Right wing side, nobody to call up yet between Ralston and Bure. Left wing side, nobody to call up. Centers, nobody to call up, shockingly. So, all right. What we'll do is we'll go best lines. First W for lower elite, way to go, gentlemen. You know, we'll actually stick with the best line options. We'll just trust our coach to set it up as he sees fit. And yeah, Carrie and Hobby Bullen can battle it out. And then in the AHL, Locker and Hirsch, that's fine. Just want to make sure, again, that there wasn't anybody that we wanted to put back in, which we did want to put Merrick Malik back in. He's still our best trade piece right now. And then Matthias Tamander. Put Ian Moran on the top line with Mike Rathji. And it was Doty Wood. Um was in because of the injury. And honestly, that's good because a lot of the guys with the better potential got half the season worth on that top unit. So let's keep going. I mean, this last month was uh, damaging to us. Obviously, we didn't check the standings. But that's okay. Let's uh, see what happens. We do actually want to get Paul Sear back in the lineup. For uh, Doty Wood. So again, Paul Sear was apparently supposed to be significantly older, but I imagine Snipe had that fixed on his roster. It's not fixed on this one. It's not a not a game breaker, you know? So we march. We move. As Blaine Locker got hurt in the AHL, I mean, we've been hovering around 500 so far this month, which isn't great. 17 wins. We are still ahead of the Oilers. Oh, man. Oh, my God. We are significantly ahead of the Oilers. Not good. Well off the playoff pace, though. Again, top four from each division makes it. There's no real shot of that. So we will be a lottery team. As right now, the New York Rangers are on pace to win the President's Trophy. And wouldn't you freaking know it, we're on pace to finish fourth from the bottom for the third year in a row, thanks to Tampa, Washington, and Edmonton. Shit. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe we'll win the lottery. We'll just get Jerome McGinley anyway, right? Not going to happen, but a man can hope. Damn. I still can't believe it took Naslin's abilities away and hasn't given them back. That's insane to me. And so unfair. Let's see. Oh, God, that's right. I shouldn't go best lines because I'm going to have to switch out the defense every time, but I forgot who uh, all the injuries happened to go to. So there we go. We're getting Shane Doan. I mean, Shane Doan's not a bad little uh, silver medal, you know? The funny thing is, Aginla isn't even the guy that we need the most. Like, we do still need a high-end center. But I don't know if we're going to find that. That's why we kind of reached for Chris Drury in the last draft, just to get somebody into the system. Let's get uh, Drury in there for Doty Wood and... Uh, We'll see what happens. If Ginla ends up in Edmonton, I think people will be big mad. More upset than uh, Watige going to Utah. Marcus Naslin suffers a concussion. Not great. And we win our 20th game of the season. Make that 21. So as of March 1st, the day before the deadline, the day before the deadline, we are 13 points clear of Edmonton with 20 games to go. We are not finishing dead last. That is a guarantee. The Penguins and Rangers have already clinched playoff spots. Jesus. And actually, we're ahead of Ottawa now. So, again, bottom eight teams are in the lottery. And uh, yikes. Yikes. This will be interesting to see where we end up. And the problem is, like, I can't even really weaken the team from here. But I'll check all the stats and everything at the end of the year because midseason, it just doesn't 
make too much sense because it is what it is. Major, what's going on, by the way? Let's go to the trade deadline, and you never know. There might be someone available that has us alter our course, and that is not the case. Tom Curvers is good. Hatcher is good. But yeah, there is nobody age-wise that we'd want to build around. All these guys are 28 years old or older. Uh, Major, I'm doing pretty good. Is there anybody, anybody at all that we could move here? Uh, we only have our first and a fifth this year. Kevin Weeks is almost ready to go. There's really nobody to move in goal. Nobody of value because we're not getting rid of Jim Carrey. Pronger's not going anywhere. We could move Merrick Malik. But no one else really has any value. Nothing else to really do there. We are going to have to make some decisions at left wing in the near future, but... Call him again. Uh, it doesn't have to be right now. Jason Allison's going to be uh, nearly NHL already. So let's see uh, who's out there. You know, ideally a center prospect... You know, we have some we have some depth on the left E side, so we can afford to move Merrick Malik. Sabres are looking to blow it up a little bit, which is surprising given how good they are. Calgary, nobody major. Brown's twenty eight, Robert Crone's twenty eight, so that doesn't really work. Trevor Kravtsov doesn't really fit what we need. He's not bad, but Alf Dahlin. Dallas looking to move court. A lot of a lot of these teams are looking to move on from some of their better players, which is a bit surprising. Todd, twenty-six year old Kevin Todd, doesn't really fit the window that we're looking for. Hmm. Eros doesn't work. Kelly Holst doesn't work. Rivers King, 30 year old Ray Ferraro. Some of these teams are really looking to off, you know, offload some of those pieces. So the kind of balance, you know, the, the balance of power in the league could be changing. Ottawa is already trying to move Kevin Hatcher. They literally just signed him. Pittsburgh is trying to move Sergey Barrison, but he doesn't fit the team. Brady Medine, Jason Blake. Yeah, what, what we're looking for does not currently exist. Unless we wanted to trade for Steven Reimprecht, which we debated doing at the draft, but that's just not the play. Uh, so we're going to hold on to Merrick Malik for the rest of the year and probably look to move him at the draft. Try to trade up again. But yeah, there's really not much we can do here. This might be the first... Trade deadline where we don't make a single move. And there's just nobody for us to trade right now. Based on the values and everything. Okay. Well, a very boring trade deadline for us. We'll see if the rest of the league goes nuts. With the major deals. Ulf Dahlen to Washington, along with a third and a seventh for Callie Johansson, a third and defenseman Jason Woolley. Yeah, so Washington's adding. Quebec is selling. Uh, a second, a third, Matthias Nordstrom to the Islanders for Benoit Hogue. All right, so the Islanders are trying to rebuild a little bit. And that was it for blockbuster deals, just two of them. I could have looked for goaltenders, but we already have a bit of a log jam. Center Mike Stapleton. He'll make the AHL team better. Let's take it. He'd make the NHL team better, for that matter. All right. Well, let's check uh, player roles again. See if anybody has developed. Carrie and Hobby Boolin are still good. Still some depth defensemen there. Nobody that we immediately want to move up. Ralston has developed now into a third liner. That's a bit of a problem, although we did plan on playing him at center. 
So uh, I think old uh, John Madden's football. How old are you now? Still 21. Yeah, I think we'll send John Madden down to the minors. Or Brian Ralston. Eliash is almost ready. And then there's Stapleton. Uh, and honestly, we will call up Stapleton. Let's swap out uh, Stefan Yell, let him get a bit more development time. So a couple changes to the lineup, even though we didn't make any moves at the draft. Go best lines. It plays Ralston as our top center with Whitney and Pat Falloon, which is awesome. Naslin, Stapleton, Barnaby, Kozlov, Chance, LaPointe, Simon, LaPerry, or McCarty. It's definitely better than what it's been throughout the year. Longer Brahowski, Oslin, Shaw, that's good. Again, Carey and Hobby Bullen battling it out for that starting spot. AHL team. I mean, Elias, Drury, and Bure as a top line is disgustingly good. Let's see, we want to get Johnson in there. Defense, make that swap. Get Dallas Eakins out from Eric Malik. Malik keeps getting better, too, so his value should be going up before this draft. Goalies are good. Thoughts on Dean Letourneau? I hope he's good. Again, like I'm I'm never one to be like, oh, this team had a really good draft. This team had a really bad draft. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Player you think could be good can end up being bad. A player you think that's going to be bad can end up being good. It's just the way the draft works. I have learned my lesson. I have learned my lesson over the years. It's fun to be overreactionary for the drafts. Uh, but that's just not something I do anymore. It's just not uh, not worth it. It's it's just as fun for me to be like, all right, cool. Let's see, let's see who develops. Let's see who doesn't. You know, holy goddamn injuries. Speaking of not developing, I guess we're just gonna go best lines for the rest of the year because my god, so many injuries. Twenty six wins on the year. Again, nowhere near a playoff spot, but how far are we to the bottom of the league and higher lottery odds? Penguins, the favorites right now to win the presidents for the third year in a row. <sighs> we could finish fifth. We could finish sixth from the bottom. We could finish third from the bottom. But top two lottery odds aren't going to happen. We cannot finish below Washington and Edmonton. So third at best, sixth at worst. That's a bit scary, but let's see. The pretty bad Toronto Maple Leafs, we lost. That's good. The pretty bad Tampa Bay Lightning, we won. The very bad Edmonton Oilers. Shit. These are wins we could not afford. Overtime loss to Buffalo. Lost to the Hartford Whalers and a win over the North Stars. Sees us finish with 29 wins and 63 points. Let's take a look back at the season. That was 29, 45, 5, and 5 in the 84-game season. The Vancouver Canucks will play the Winnipeg slash uh, Arizona team. Winnipeg Jets, we call them. Calgary taking on L.A. In the Norris, Chicago will play the Minnesota North Stars, and Detroit will play St. Louis. Yes, Toronto and Tampa, and Detroit for that matter, were Western Conference teams. In the Adams Division, Buffalo will play Montreal, who are ahead of Boston on tiebreaker. Colorado will play Hartford, a.k.a. Quebec will play Hartford. And in the Patrick Division, the Rangers will play the Islanders. The Devils will play the Penguins. So we finished fifth from the bottom ahead of Toronto, Tampa, Edmonton, and Washington. Damn it. We improved. Again, had we signed Kevin Hatcher, we probably would have finished like sixth. So we are getting better. What a season for Ray Whitney. 85 points in 84 games. Pat Falloon, 79 points, 37 goals. Matthew Barnaby, 50 points, 
165 penalty minutes. Barnaby is turning into the rat that we need him to be. Nasland outscored by Barnaby. Granted, he missed five games. Kozlov, 48 points, 24 goals. Shantz had 41 points. Cardi LaPointe, 22 points in 19 games for Brian Ralston. Tremendous. Even though he lost his abilities. Fucking hate this game. Simon LaPerriere, Stapleton did pretty well when we played him. Defensively, 51 points for Pronger. Ozil Lynch on 34. Berhowski had a pretty good year. A lot of penalty minutes for Link Gates. We like to see that. And then goaltenders, Carey and Hobby Bullen. Uh, very, very similar stat lines. Carey, of course, played the full season at the NHL level. Hobby Bullen uh, was called up around the deadline. So, pretty good season for us, which is nice in some ways. Steve Eiserman wins the scoring title in 132 points. Of course, you see Lemieux, Beret, Yager, and Oates up there as the top five. Shout out to NHL 94 GOAT Cliff Ronning. A lot of guys over 100 points this year again. Top goal scorer is Claude Lemieux. Snipe! Why has Claude Lemieux turned into the GOAT? Pavel Bure, Mario Lemieux, Brett Hull, and Steve Eiserman all over 60 goals. Outrageous. Claude Lemieux is a monster in this game. What the hell? Defensively, nobody at a point per game mark, but top five in scoring, Brian Leach, Paul Coffey, Kevin Hatcher, Norm McIver, and Al McInnes. Wow. Wow. Top and goals, Hatcher, damn, Ryan Leach, Dave Ellett, Al McInnes, and Al Iafrady. The goaltenders, the winningest, Barrasso, Osgood, Richter, Van Beesbrook, and Chevelday. Shutouts, Mike Richter, the leader with five, Marty Brodeur with four. He developed a lot of abilities this year. Didn't get the gold back, though. Top save percentage, shout out to Lord Byron, who's made it. Uh, Ken Reggett was the best overall for a goalie with a good amount of games. Tugnut was really good again. Uh, but Grant Fuhr, arguably the best starter, unless you want to consider Tommy Soderstrom finally developing for Philly. The top rookie with 55 points, Paul Correa. Alfie was up there, too. Uh, it might still go to Correa, despite the plus minus. Don't be surprised, though, if it goes to Peter Forsberg in Quebec. Even goalie-wise, it could go to Jim Carrey. Or Manny Fernandez, you never know. So the player development in this mode is bonkers. Let's take a look at the fight leader. <laughs> 44 more fights for Dale Hunter. 26 for Barnaby this year. Look at that. 21 for Link Gates and then 18 for Gord Donnelly. We fought anybody that was willing to drop the gloves. And probably even some guys that weren't willing to drop the gloves. Let's be honest. So a uh, pretty solid year for us in terms of improvements. Maybe a little bit too good. Time will tell. Uh, our defending Calder Cup champion Kansas City Blades have made the playoffs thanks to a phenomenal year from Patrick Eliash. We'll see if they can go back to back. As they play Springfield. Hello, Springton. And they're down 0-2 to Springfield already. 2-1, holy injuries and recovery from injuries. 2-2 two -two series, Ian Moran's their leading scorer. That's not good. 3-2 series, making four straight wins for KC. They are moving on to the next round, and we'll take a look at the NHL playoffs as well. As in round number one, Dallas pulls off the upset, a.k.a. Minnesota. You know what I mean. Uh, Dallas pulls off the upset. St. Louis over Detroit. Arizona over Vancouver. Los Angeles over Calgary. Buffalo over Montreal. Colorado sweeps Carolina. Rangers over the Islanders. And Pittsburgh over New Jersey. So we have North Stars and Blues. Jets and Kings. Sabres and Nordiques. Rangers and Penguins. 
Fair enough. And last year, the Final Four, all number one seeds. Not what happened this year, though. We take on the Cleveland Lumberjacks in round number two. Pittsburgh's minor league affiliate. They had a pretty strong year. 1-1 one, one split. 2-1 in our favor. Burray now our leading scorer. 3-1 in our favor. And the Kansas City Blades are moving on to the conference finals. As the quarterfinals for the NHL, not even done yet. It is Peoria in Kansas City. Let's see, a 2 nothing lead for Kansas City. They got 2-1. 3-1. They will have a chance to defend their crown. The Kansas City Blades going to look to go back to back. Wow, what a run. Let's look at those NHL playoffs here now that they're in the semifinal round. As St. Louis knocked out the North Stars, L.A. knocked out Winnipeg, Quebec over Buffalo, and the New York Rangers again knock out the Pittsburgh Penguins. So it is St. Louis, L.A., Quebec, and New York. 1995, so the Quebec-Colorado contingent looking to be a year ahead of schedule as Gretzky's Kings try to finally get it done. See if they can. Let's find out who the Blades are playing. As they try to retain their Calder Cup. And it will be the Adirondack Red Wings. That's kind of scary to me that the Red Wings have that good of a prospect pool. That they could also make the Calder Cup final. I mean, they have Craig McTavish on that team. Chris Draper, Sheldon Kennedy. I mean, they got a lot of veterans on that team. Totally different makeup to our roster. A lot of veterans, including some former players of ours, and Roman Chekmanik in goal. Okay. Let's see. Will it be back-to-back -back for the Blades? I mean, at least we can say we've already won some hardware. They take game one. They take game two. Lose game three. Win game four. Lose game five. Game six. Make it back-to-back -back Calder Cups for our AHL team, the Kansas City Blades, while Mark Messier and the New York Rangers, a year late is better late than never. The Rangers have won the Stanley Cup, but a back-to-back -back run for the Blades as the Rangers swept the St. Louis Blues in the Cup Final. I'd be interested in doing a throwback franchise in Madden in the future. In the very distant future, yes. Obviously, a lot of football this summer. But Wow, so there it is. The Rangers win their first cup in a very, very long time. Surviving Brett Hall, Craig Janney, Shanahan, and the Blues. And again, our AHL team. Consecutive Calder Cups. Rangers led by Eddie O. The legend himself, Eddie Olchek, leading the way. And Messier delivers on his promise. I mean, we looked at the Rangers and identified them as a big-time threat in the East. So, seeing rumors of the brush signing with the Oilers, thoughts if it happens. That's where his dad played. I told people he was going to end up there. We'll see if that's the case. But heading into free agency, that is my prediction, is Jake DeBrus becomes an Oiler. All right. Let's take a look at the awards. Let's do it. So again, your first three Stanley Cup champions, Boston, Detroit, and New York, all original six franchises thus far. And of course, it was, uh, oh, it was actually Vancouver who won the President's Trophy this year, not Pittsburgh. I thought it was three in a row for the Pens. Steve Eiserman, back-to-back -back Art Ross trophies. While Mario Lemieux wins his back-to-back -back Art Ross, or a heart, excuse me, not the Art Ross. Um... Of course, the Penguins just continue to struggle. The Norris to Brian Leach joins Al McKinnis and Larry Murphy in this timeline. Eiserman wins the Bing. Calder to Peter Forsberg. I told you, man. Plus minus is weighted way too heavily for the Calder. Peter Forsberg joins Alex Mogilny and Ray Whitney as Calder winners. The Con Smythe goes to Eddie Olchek. 
Tremendous. Tremendous, tremendous. We gotta take a screenshot of that one. The Vesna to Mike Richter. Mike Richter wins the Vesna. The Jennings to Eddie Belfour and Mark Fitzpatrick. And Klee wins the Masterton. Jack Adams to the North Stars head coach. The Selkie for the third year in a row to Adam Oates. Just Bruins dominance of the Selkie Trophy. Lemieux wins the Ted Lindsay Award. But the Rocket Richard, well, funny enough, it also goes to Lemieux. But Clued Lemieux. Which is insane to me, but there it is. In the AHL, again, back to back for our Kansas City Blades. We are building up a dynasty through the minors. I think it was Dan Quinn won the Solenberger for most points. He was also league MVP. Ziggy Palfi, top goal scorer for the Islanders. While Patrick Eliash, rookie of the year. Let's go. Rob Ramage was the top defenseman. Roman Chekmanek, top goaltender, so... Uh, we beat a very good Adirondack Red Wings team in the final. Patrick Eliash, Rookie of the Year and MVP of the championship winning club in the same season. Get ready for Patrick Eliash, man. He'll probably be on our NHL roster next year. So overall, I cannot possibly handle the song right now. I, I just simply cannot. There's just no way. Uh, that said, am I worried about the progress reports? I think I am. Pronger is showing up as an 88. Still not an elite defenseman. He's getting natural and statistical growth, though. Luna, an 86. Whitney. No growth for Nasla. Uh-oh. Medium elite Marcus Nasla. No growth this year at all. Might we have to move Marcus Nasland this offseason? Ralston developed, but to see no development at all for Nasland at a medium elite is rough. Great development for Eliash. I'm I'm a little bit worried. I'm a little bit worried. Shatan, Jason Allison. I mean, we are still getting some. Some upgrades here, but... Oh, we're doing this again. Oh, shout out to tiebreaker for the nine months. That Naslund acquisition has not worked out tremendously well thus far. It's still early, but, you know. We have the fifth best odds in this year's draft lottery, the Jerome Aginla draft. Last year, with the first overall pick, the Senators selected Daniel Alfredson. And here they are from six to one. We fall to the sixth overall pick. Alfredson and Aginla for the Ottawa Senators. That's. Oh my God. That was not the lottery to lose. Again, generated player in Silverberg. You still got Sakura, Doan, and McLaren up there, but Iggy was the prize. Nine months subscribed to Sisyphus Incarnate. Yeah, well, what can I say? Let's take a look at retired players before we get to this draft. And we are now starting to see some of the uh, veterans of the league step to the side. Apparently, Scott Reedy played games for somebody. <laughs> Defensively, apparently Derek Pouliot played for somebody too, but Charlie Huddy's the big name to go there. No goaltenders. Okay. <sighs> All right. The lottery luck continues to elude us, but we've been able to do well in terms of making trades at the draft. Maybe this is the year we don't go for the first round and we look for those, you know, steals later on in the draft, right? Maybe. Does anybody want to trade their pick? No. So there's no trading up into the top five. That's just not a thing that's going to happen. Uh, so this is 
a good year to trade back or to see if anybody is offering up a prospect similar to when the Penguins were offering up Nasland that we could look to get. Again, somebody like Tamu is unobtainable unless the team wants to trade them. Uh, the values are just so high. Craig Simpson's 28. Brown's 29, so, eh. If the Borny's not bad, but we're looking for better. Otherwise, Todd White. Todd White wouldn't be a bad addition for us at center. Todd White and an extra pick or two wouldn't be that bad. Um, I also wouldn't mind Mike Knubel, but he doesn't fit the team. Shane Corson doesn't fit the team. Ruslan Saleh is not bad, but also we already have depth at lefty. And these guys are all too old. Holmstrom doesn't fit. Looks like trading down might not be the, uh, the best way to go. Well, the worst way to go, I should say. I mean, there's no... There's no crazy trade to be made here. So if we go back to Detroit, Todd White, former Thrasher. That is the best player for us to look to acquire. If we were to make a trade, who's available at six? Michael Hanzus should be available. Hanzus looks like he'd be better. There's also Damon Langkow. Let's take a look later on in the draft. There is Jaguar and Kippersoff. Generated Topi Rutu. But there's also Martin Biron, Mark Denis, Vesta Toscala, Chris Mason, Brian Boucher, J.S. Oban, Johnson, Scott Clemenson. I mean, there are familiar names for sure. Uh, you know what I want to do, actually, is sort by potential. So Kipper, uh, Kipper saw a dude named Keith, a dude named Keen. If there was a goalie steal, it's Kipper at 28. Defensively, Stefan Robida is later in the draft. Wade Redden's available. Philip Kuba's later on. Christian Laflamme is a uh, generated dude, I'm sure. Got to Aki Berg. Low elite Thomas Ackerstrom. Generated. Aaron Sheridev, Sammy Tikkanen. Okay. Right wing side, there was Iggy. No outright steals that we know of. Left side, as Jerome McGinley has been drafted by the Ottawa Senators. They have had the lottery luck that we haven't, which is rough. Frankie, I hope you've been enjoying it. Again, it was almost lost the time. Um, the Senators have had to build up through the lottery. We're trying to build up through wheeling and dealing. That's just kind of how it's worked out for us. Uh, there's no way Peter Royals I made him elite. There's no way Snipe would have done that. Michael Zeus, Andy McDonald, Mark Savard's in this draft. I mean, outside of trying to get an early second rounder for Kipper and Stefan Robida, there's not too much to look to get towards the end of the draft either. So we can make the pick. For the likes of Michael Hanzus, Wade Redden's unconfirmed NHL ready, but again, we really don't need a defenseman unless we know for a fact he's that good. Damon Lankow, Brian Berard, Andy McDonald, Jochen Hesch, Mark Savard, Rack Dvorak's NHL ready. He just won't have the highest potential. I mean, it looks like Savard wouldn't be the worst way to go. That's number 12. Detroit. Uh, pick further up than that. They pick at 15. Jan Herdina is not in the same class of center that we would need. Okay. I think we can go best of both worlds here. Let me double check the class one more time. And if we were to go at 15, Alexi Morozov, Shudlitsky, Herdina. 
Beards out. Kill Samuel so we don't have enough. Corral Sevax generated. Obviously, I'm trying to avoid generated players right now if I can. Kipper at 28. Dag was in the first round last year. Trading to 28 is going to be rough. If we want Kippersoft, we got to trade up earlier than that. And it would have to be the Rangers at 24. The Edmonton Oilers at two. Take the generated guy, Silverberg. I think I have a, uh, a roadmap for what we want to do with this draft. I do want to acquire Todd White from Detroit. And I'm willing to give up Merrick Malik to do it. Malik is developing. He's just not... Actually, shit, he is developing pretty fast compared to Mike Rathje. Malik had a really strong development year. Obviously, Rathje is almost more ready now. Will Malik make up four points in two years? I got a hunch the answer is yes. Maybe instead, we try to use Mike Rathji for this. Malik would definitely get this to go through. Anybody else to give up in a deal like this? I don't want to give up Kevin Weeks. Hobby Bullen has now... Hobby Bullen has now usurped Jim Carrey as the likely starter of this team. So we could move Carey, although obviously the value isn't that high. Mike Ratchie and Jim Carey for Todd White. What do they think? Sweeten it just a touch. I'm willing to do that. And we need a center like Todd White. So Ratchie, Carey, and a seventh. We get Todd White. We'll see who's available here at six. Washington takes Peter Sikora. I would have traded up to get him, too, but they didn't want to move the pick. Oh, love me some Peter Sikora, but uh, wasn't going to happen. Wasn't meant to be. Tampa at four. Take defenseman Kyle McLaren. And Toronto at five. Take Wade Redden. They went off the board. Shane Doan is available for us at pick number six. Okay. Well, that just uh, that just changed things because I was heavily debating drafting Hanzus or trading down to get Mark Savard. Shane Doan's an NHL ready player. I'm out. That changes things a little bit. So if we bring in Shane Doan, somebody's got to go. Even if we consider Brian Ralston a center, somebody has to go. And it's probably McCarty... Or LaPointe, that's still not going to be enough to trade back up. 9, 10 are possibilities. Give me a second here. We need to explore all of our options. We can go as far low as 10 or 12. It would have to be 10. So... We wanted to pick Doan here. We'd have to use a right wing. It would make sense instead of going for those mid picks. Oh, wait, take it easy, by the way. We'd have to go for those mid picks. Do I have the value to get there? I don't think I do. It would have to be Merrick Malik. But we just traded Rathji. 
That doesn't really work for me, brother. Although Malik at best will end up being like third pairing. He might be as good as Ozil and someday. If we were to use Merrick Malik on the right side. I might end up having to choose between Doan and Bure is the problem. Is Barnaby we definitely want on the team, but if we use Darren McCarty and Marty Lapointe, how close are we to that tenth overall pick to also get a center? How much would I have to add? This pretty much eliminates our ability to trade up and get Kippersoff, but it is what it is. How close does a fifth rounder get us? Again, I really don't want to add Beret here unless I absolutely have to. Fuck. Well, I'm staring down the barrel of not of having to choose between best available and position of need. What about a third rounder next year? Malik McCarty Lapointe, a third. And the fourth. Okay, we got it. Malik, McCarty, LaPointe, a third and a fourth. Gets us the 10th overall pick that we'll probably use to take Mark Savard. That means it's six instead of trading down because he fell to us. Uh, we are going to take Shane Doan, who is NHL ready. Has four abilities at the very least. So Shane Doan is the pick at a 79 overall medium top six. Way to go, Toronto. Philly, at seven, take Hanzus, who I was originally planning on choosing. Uh, he's certainly not bad. But trading down also works, too. Montreal, at eight, take Damon Langkow, who I was also considering taking. Boston, at nine, take Brian Burrard, which I love. So that 10, that does give us, to dra uh, give us the ability to draft the center that we needed. Jokin Hayes should have had center, though, shouldn't he? So it's Mark Savard, who's one year out. Tape to tape, send it, and big tipper. Or Andy McDonald, who was one year out. Quick draw, tape to tape. Anybody change their mind about wanting to trade? No, they didn't. So we have to choose. Um, I like me some Andy McDonald, but I like me some Mark Savard more. Although this guy is probably going to be sick, isn't he? Maybe not. Mark Savard's the pick. No doubt. 73, I mean, he's already our best center prospect. Easily. So we land Shane Doan and Mark Savard in the 95 drafts. There are still some players later on that I'm interested in trying to acquire, but we don't have much to work with. It was uh, Kiprasov around pick number 28 and Stefan Robida around pick 50. So let's go through the rest of the first round. We'll obviously see who takes who where, but I don't see how we'd possibly be able to get Kiprasov at this point. We do not have the value to trade for the 24th overall pick. We just don't. Um, I'd rather go for the steals later on in the draft. So, uh, let's go to the next round. Nobody's changing their mind. Uh, for the record, Jochen Hecht went 11th to Minnesota. Andy McDonald went 12th to Calgary. Zidlitschke to the Hartford Whalers. Terrien to the Islanders. Dude name, uh, that is actually Joe Corvo to the Red Wings. Radic Dvorak to the Devils. Really good starting overall. Jan Herdina to the Penguins, which I'm pretty sure is where he went. Lexi Morozov to Buffalo. Philip Kuba to Chicago. Uh, Mikhail Samuelson to Vancouver. Seabacks a generated dude. So is Corey, Aubrey, and Jan Lavach to the Rangers. So... Again, unless Kippersoft falls to pick five, he's not going to be ours. Dude named Tham. Dude named Ryan. Trombley. If Toronto fucks up, we have a chance. They did not fuck up. The Toronto Maple Leafs take Mika Kippersoft. We were one pick away from being able to make it happen. 
Skipper goes to the Leafs. So that leaves us in two years out for like McKee, McCauley, Orsaw. Certainly not bad. Most of these guys are two years out or so. Now, J.S. Jaguar is still in this draft around 39. But the player that was most interesting, despite there being a lot of guys who were known to make the NHL, the player that was most interesting was Stefan Robida. But then again, maybe not. Maybe he's not the steal. I hope he is. Maybe we settle for Jaguar at 39. So it's 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Trust me, it wasn't lost on me how the Oilers have all the picks in the row. There's no room to trade up either to get Jaguar. We'd have to take him super fucking early. Um, we can check with Ottawa, but it is unlikely. I think because Shane Doan became available, that completely changed our draft strat. And yeah, there, there's just, there, there's no way. There's just no way. So. Second round pick swap. You never know, though. We might want that pick for next year if we're able to trade into the top five. So uh, we're going to sim to our pick of 101. Let some decent players go, but let's see who's available here. So a uh, shout out to Brian Adams, but nobody in goal. Uh, defensively, no major names to worry about anymore. Right wing side, no one to worry about. Left wing side, no one to worry about. Oh, we're checking leagues. That would make sense as to why it was so empty. Uh, so for goalies, because again, I don't really care about generated dudes. Um, Carpentier is real, but like JSO Ban, Brent Johnson, Scott Clemenson. Are the guys there? Defense. Any really fun old names? Doesn't look like it. Uh, what about the right wing side? Shane Willis, former member of the Lightning. What about that left wing side? Yeah, nobody. Oh, we don't have too many. Terry Ryan. There we go. I can I can endear myself to the fucking Chicklets crew who have made asses out of themselves being like, oh, the Panthers have no fans. That fucking lazy ass shit. Henrik Lundqvist. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I can't switch him to goalie. Centers, Chad Kilger. Got to be honest, Chad Kilger is probably the guy just because, again, we need centers. We need those centers. So, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of decent options, but we're going for Chad Kilger. 77 overall out of the gates. He is only a low nine, but that is a phenomenal starting overall with abilities for Chad Kilger. That's a fucking steal for the fifth round. Let's go. All right. Well, let's see how this draft panned out. Honestly, I'm happy. Don Savard Kilger is a decent haul. I know we didn't end up with Kippersoff or anything like that, but we do have Hobby Bullen in goal. So, by round, again, this was the first round. Jerome McGinley, first overall to Ottawa, their second straight first overall pick last year. They brought in Daniel Alfredson. So that's, uh, that's fun. But again, to get Shane Doan and Mark Savard is a pretty good haul. Round number two, Mika Kiprasov to Toronto. You got Jay McKee, Vaclav Forsaw, Alan McCauley, Aki Berg, Mike LeClaire, Peter Schaefer. That's some good depth for the Oilers. PJ Axelson to Washington, Danny Markoff and Isbister. How many fucking picks did the Islanders have? Jesus Christ. Delmore, Peter Buzik, Danny Gauthier, and Tuomo Rutu to the Tampa Bay Lightning at the end. Mark Eaton, Stefan Robida. Dude, the Oilers had so many picks. Jesus Christ. Look at how many picks. We have to look at their class specifically. Robida, Tarnkvist, Matthew Biron, Brian Pontier, Mark Denis, Vesa Toskala, Brent Sopel. 
George, I didn't even notice LaRock was in this draft. He went to Buffalo. I had no idea LaRock was in this draft. That's a shame. I missed the draft. Any generational talent slide to the Sharks, unless you consider Shane Doan a generational talent. But he did fall to us at six when I mean, he should have gone fourth. Any Hommel, Matthew Darsh, Brad Larson, Jean Luc Grandpierre. Not bad. Chris Mason to Chicago. And then fifth round, we got Chad Kilger. Ryan Boucher was in that round. Shane Willis. If Doan hadn't been so loyal, he would have won. He would have at least won a cup somewhere. He would have been given opportunities. That loyalty did not pay off, unfortunately. It's commendable, but it didn't pay off. Gary Ryan ended up going, uh, go figure, to the Coyotes slash Jets. Again, H. Lundquist is not Henrik Lundquist. It is, but it isn't. And then seventh round, the familiar names had already kind of died out. So, uh, really quickly, the Jets' most familiar name is going to be Terry Ryan to most people. Uh, the Bruins, Berard, McKee, Pothier, a lot of defensemen. Sabres, quite a few picks for the Sabres. Got some grit, too, with LaRock, Burrington. Calgary, Andy McDonald, not much else. Harvard Whalers did Lichke, Delmore. They took quite a bit of uh, defense in that draft, too. Philip Kuba, Mason. I did want to check the A uh, Oilers specifically. Jesus Christ, Edmonds. You look like me in a normal draft with no restrictions where I'm just trading up to get everybody that I want. That is insane. Islanders had quite a few picks as well, but not as many. So Overall, I, I would say we had a decent little draft. Big shout out to Sam Besser for the raid, by the way. Welcome in. I was uh, seven days to die, I think, we were playing tonight or something like that. Let's take a look here. So, yeah, Hobby Bullen, he's going to be our guy moving forward. We're going to have to sign, like, Kevin Weeks, a couple other options. Oz Lynch is going to need a contract. We'll figure things out. Like, Shane Doan's almost going to be NHL ready out of the gates. Dead Marsh needs his ELC. Nasland is up to an 87 and has redeveloped some abilities. Granted, skilled up is the worst goddamn ability you can develop in this game because the AI do not know how to use it. They never Michigan. Uh, but close quarters is great. So Marcus Nasland may just have hope on this team yet, but we are very quickly... Going to run into the issue of too many players and too few spots. That left wing side is almost there already. By the start of the season, I think Kozlov's probably on his way out because we're probably going to stay loyal to Marcus Nasland and Ray Whitney. So big changes coming soon.